Item number SCP-3947, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3947 instances are to be kept in a bathtub housed inside a large-sized high-value containment chamber at Site-88. Requests for money, decoration, or bath toys are to be granted as long as the items will not result in an increased risk of a containment breach. Staff assigned to SCP-3947 are to have a good understanding of and fondness of slapstick comedy. Task Force Omega-16, that's all folks, is to be present outside at all times to prevent escape attempts. Description SCP-3947 is a collection of five of a duck bath toys. Each SCP-3947 instance possesses a unique design. SCP-3947 instances are sentient and capable of human-like vocalizations in exaggerated accents. SCP-3947 instances can produce objects commonly used in slapstick cartoons, such as frying pans, boxing gloves, and anvils. Several occasions, SCP-3947 instances have shown the ability to temporarily alter their shape, gain limbs, or transforming into objects such as miniature boats or bombs. SCP-3947 instances are capable of using any produced items regardless of size or weight. Persons or objects subject to violence from SCP-3947 instances suffer no permanent harm. The instances themselves similarly will suffer no permanent damage from the actions of others. In both cases, the affected individuals will suffer painful but not debilitating damage often involving stretching or large lumps that heal very quickly. SCP-3947 instances often attempt to escape the chamber in order to commit acts such as theft or assault. No attempt to escape the facility itself has been attempted by SCP-3947 instances. SCP-3947 instances enjoy smoking cigarettes, which is the item they most frequently manifest. SCP-3947 instances have a marked hatred of people who openly express a dislike of slapstick comedy. Instances will actively attempt to steal from and attack such individuals whilst repeatedly insulting them. Addendum 3947-1 Individual SCP-3947 Instance Behaviors Numbers Designation Description SCP-3947-1 The Boss One act as the leader of the SCP-3947 instances. One does not commit hostile act itself. Instead, giving orders to the other SCP-3947 instances to do so. One speaks in an accent reminiscent of Godfather characters in media. One is commonly calm and suave, and is open to interviews or discussion. However, one is also prone to bouts of anger, typically when the other SCP-3947 instances fail to complete a task. One wears a tuxedo and has a pencil moustache and comb-over. SCP-3947-2 Pinstripes Two acts as a strategist and negotiator for the SCP-3947 instances. Two has displayed much higher intelligence than the remaining instances. Two rarely uses its reality-altering abilities for purposes beyond creating weapons. Two will attempt to intimidate people who try to stop SCP-3947 related activities. Intimidation is carried out through threats against one's family or well-being. The instances have yet to fulfill two's threats. Two's design includes a fedora and pinstripe suit. SCP-3947-3 Tiny Three directly attacks individuals, interfering with SCP-3947 related activities. Three speaks in simple sentences and seems to lack a basic understanding of math and science. 
This instance is approximately 1.3 times the size of a typical rubber duck. Three's design includes a leather jacket and pumper deer. SCP-3947-4, Natasha. Four is the only SCP-3947 instance with a female appearance. Four is capable of disabling foundation security systems. Four's behavior appears relaxed except when the instance is stealing objects under one's direction. Four speaks in a Russian accent. Four's design includes a bella clover and blue dress. SCP-3947-5 Blasty. Five will cost half egg separately from other SCP-3947 instances, whilst those instances carry out one's orders. This is generally accomplished through the application of explosives. Five's personality appears incredibly unstable, with the instance laughing or screaming at various times. Five's design includes blast armor. Addendum. 3947-2 SCP-3947-1 Interview Interviewed SCP-3947-1 Interviewer Dr. Carver Forward On May 7th, 2009 SCP-3947-1 Read a private interview with Dr. Carver SCP-3947's Head Researcher Begin Log before we begin, I'd like to thank you for granting this interview. I is not too much of a problem. I'm not the busiest guy in the world, so we can chat however long you'd like. Excellent. On to the matter at hand. Why do you and the rest of the SCP-3947 instances feel a need to commit crimes? We commit crimes for the same reason you researchers research. We're criminals. Ain't too complicated if you ask me. No, I mean, what are your motives for committing crimes? Eh, I don't know. It's fun, I guess. It's just always the thing we do. Hmm, no motive to speak of at all. Not even greed? Oh, Christ, more this mumbo jumbo. You know, back in the day, stuff was simple. Us villains didn't need to think of motives or whatever. He did it cause we're the bad guys. Not everybody has a complex story. You want me to blab on and on on how we were created by something or other, or just accept that some things exist for the simple pleasures. I think you make your point clear. God? Please escort SCP-3947-1 back to its cell. Guards begin escorting SCP-3947-1. Damn, boys! Two bowling balls fall from the ceiling, knocking the guards unconscious. <laughs> the idiots barely know what hit them. SCP-3947 has breached contain- SCP-3947-3 strikes Dr. Cover with a frying pan. <laughs> Take that, dirt man! Quit squaring around, you don't! Big color try and find where the stash is! Yes, we must go before more gods come. Perhaps we find Farka this time. End log. Closing statement. SCP-3947 instances are not to be allowed of themselves under any circumstances.